Hello everyone and welcome to this next section. In this section, I'll talk about some of the skills and actual opportunities because of these skills that you can acquire as a hard power electronics engineer. So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about hardware. As a power electronics engineer, hardware is one of the biggest challenges and also the most valuable skill that you can acquire. And as a power electronics engineer, wherever you go, they will always question you, what is your hardware skill? What are your hardware skills, rather? This is the question you'll always be asked. The reason is simple. Building a hardware prototype is the final verification of any power electronics project. When you have a working prototype and you can show that this working prototype works exactly the way we say it does, that has a final closure to any project. More than anything else, a simulation, analysis, these can still be different from what might actually happen in the field, in real life. But a hardware prototype usually is the final source of truth. Now, hardware is a huge challenge for the simple reason that it needs several skills to come together. To build a final hardware prototype, you need many skills, such as you need skills in fabrication. You need to assemble power converters, you need to bring all those components together, you need to solder, you need to become a carpenter, you need to become a fitter, and all kinds of things. Because this, in a hardware prototype, it's not just about the circuit. Unlike in basic electronics engineering or basic electronics lab, where you just put together a circuit on a breadboard, right, or a simple test circuit board. In a hardware prototype, you would need to assemble your power converter or your system as a final product project or other product, almost as a product. And therefore it needs several, several skills. And I'll talk about that very soon with an example project that I did. And of course, getting this prototype to work is not just about fabrication. You need a working controller. And this controller nowadays almost is completely digital which means all controllers are implemented digitally using microcontrollers. And that means they need to be programmed. So therefore, you need programming skills as well. So this is the real challenge in hardware. And I'll give you an example of a project that I did during my postdoc years to give you an idea of what actually happens in hardware. So during my postdoc, I was building a microgrid and that microgrid required an inverter or a converter. So this is a photograph of that converter. So this is where I had actually taken a piece of wood as a base and I had mounted all my converter components on it. So for example, I had used an intelligent power module. So this white block here is an intelligent power module. An intelligent power module consists of six IGBTs, which are insulated gate bipolar transistors, and these are devices which can be turned on and off given a gate pulse. And these intelligent power modules form the base of my converter because it's a three-phase converter. So there are six devices altogether. Now, since this is a power device, we have to mount it on a heat sink. And this metallic block here is a heat sink. And you can see these are all the fins. These, what do you call it? These kind of uh, corrugated edges are actually fins. This is important because this power device, as it operates, can get pretty hot. And that is the reason why we need to keep it cool. And for that, it is mounted on a heat sink. Now, this heat sink is cooled by a fan. This black thing here is actually an electric fan, which I connect to my power supply so that this fan is always blowing. And this keeps this power device cool. Now, the DC bus, as we already seen, power converter converts DC to AC, which means it takes at the input a DC source or DC voltage and produces an AC output. This DC is, is this DC bus is formed by these four electro electrolytic capacitors, right? These electrolytic capacitors make sure that the DC bus of this converter is a fairly steady voltage with a little bit of fluctuations, but it this DC capacitor filters it out and makes it fairly smooth, right? Now, the AC output of this converter is connected to six terminals 
and such that we can connect this entire system. We can provide an input which is a DC source and we can extract an AC output from it. This is the advantage of this particular converter. Now, of course, as I said, this is only a postdoc project, which is why I didn't actually put it in a box or try to make it look like a finished product because this is a laboratory prototype. But this gives you an idea of what it goes into actually building a hardware prototype. You have to cut a piece of wood. You have to drill holes on this metallic heat sink in order to mount it. And you have to fix all these elements on this wooden board. So as you can see, I have fixed them all here. So this is an example of a sample converter base. Now, I'll keep going. So this circuit board here, this is a measurement and controller circuit that I designed again while I was a postdoc. So you see here is that this circuit can measure four voltages. This circuit can measure four voltages. Now these blue boxes that you see, these are Hall effect transducers. Hall effect transducers will measure a voltage and produce an isolated output that can be used in an actual sensing circuit. Because remember, we want isolation between our actual power circuit and the control circuit. That is very important because otherwise, this there is actually a danger of electrocution and moreover, you need to separate the two systems together. They have to be isolated because you don't want the control ground and the power ground to be actually connected in any form. You can also measure four AC, four currents and these currents can be either AC or DC. So again, these blue boxes that you see, these are Hall effect current transducers. So which means that you can wind a wire through it and it will produce at the output a voltage corresponding to the current that flows through it. So again, the output is isolated from the input. input. That is the biggest advantage. Now, this circuit will measure these voltages, measure these currents, will condition them and up, make them available to this controller here. This controller is a Texas Instrument Digital Signal Processor. So basically it has a DSP processor which is a floating point processor and this is a microcontroller which means it has everything. It has analog to digital ports, it has PWM outputs which means you can also control the firing pulses to your power converter. Right? So this one board allows us to measure so many voltages, measure so many currents, feed them to our, con to our controller and we can program this controller to run any control code that uses these voltages and currents and takes appropriate action. And that appropriate action is generating switch in pulses for the converter. That's what this does. So the next slide will put all these together and you can see that this is a complete integrated box, integrated unit. So as you can see, this is where I put them all together. At the base is the power converter, which I showed in the very first slide. That is, that is the intelligent power module mounted on the heat sink with the electrolytic capacitors forming the DC bus of the converter. Now here you can see I'm using two boards, two circuit boards of the measurement and controller which I showed before. This means that this, this system can take in eight currents and eight voltages and feed them to our controller here which is a DSP based microcontroller. And the DSP based microcontroller will generate switching signal which is fed by this ribbon cable to the intelligent power module. So, with this one integrated circuit, we can feed in a DC bus, we can extract an AC output, and we can control our converter for any purpose. So, for example, I use this converter setup for a number of applications. For example, I used it for reactive power compensation. I used it as a voltage stabilizer. I also used it as an uninterruptible power supply and it was also a part of a microgrid, which means they were emulating wind turbines, they were emulating solar panels and so on and so forth. 
So this setup took almost four months to design. It took two iterations to get these circuit boards exactly the way I want because remember, I was also trying to mount them all on the same base. So I had to actually get to position all these components so as to get the size correct. And finally, the fabrication and getting all the circuit boards soldered, this entire project took four months. But I would say this is probably one of the most enjoyable projects I've ever done. And it is a great, great bit of satisfaction to be able to get a hardware prototype working in exactly the way you want. So, if you do reach the stage where you can build such a power converter unit and you can show such photographs in a job interview, your prospects in getting jobs is going to be way, way better. And that's what I would like to say that hardware skills are extremely valuable. And if you can demonstrate them effectively, your job prospects go up significantly, right? You are just so much more employable, especially in a power company. Now, circuit design, the circuit boards which I showed here, this circuit design needs basic electronic skills because you do need to be able to design circuits according to basic principles. But what is most important is to be able to design such a circuit board, you also have to be able to design printed circuit boards, which are called PCBs. And this knowledge of designing printed circuit boards is also extremely valuable. This is also something that can contribute to your employability. So, now the last bit. Programming microcontrollers and getting controllers to work is also another special case. Why? Because remember, a power converter on its own is nothing. You need to be able to control it, which means you need to supply it with switching pulses. And these switching pulses have to be such that the converter performs a particular task. And therefore, Programming microcontrollers, designing controllers is also something that can actually add to your employability. And trust me, getting controllers to work is a very special skill and even not easy to find even in large companies, right? You might think that if you're, that this is something that is commonly found, well, think twice because it is not commonly found. To be able to get controllers to work using programming microcontrollers, even in large companies, they value that greatly. So to sum it up, each and every one of these hardware skills can actually get you a job on its own. And if you can acquire all of them, trust me, you are so much closer to getting that dream job in an R&D organization. This is the advantage of being skilled at hardware. So, with this, I would like to end this lecture. This lecture was mainly to inspire you in acquiring hardware skills. I thoroughly enjoyed my days as a hardware engineer. And if looked at the, the right perspective, that is, if you look at hardware as a challenge, as an opportunity, hardware is immensely enjoyable. So, if you have any doubts, please do post. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you so much and see you soon. Goodbye for now.